Think of me as the ultimate role model. You used to be a doctor. Yes. Help me. Just chill the f out. Does that knowledge that you have real skills, real abilities, give you confidence as a show business guy? I'm an actor. I'm a comedian. I'm an Instagram model. I can do anything. Hollywood has plenty of rags to riches stories. People who essentially came from nothing. You had a real messed up childhood. I had an odd childhood. And went on to achieve their wildest dreams. Now that you have a lot of money, now that you're yeah. a superstar, and you make 20 million a film. But what if you flip this idea on its head? What if you had the stable upbringing, the promising career? A lot of college kids, I think, go down a path because they think they should. Yes. With the intelligence and sharp wit to match. The You Complete Me Ho is, yeah. the, is the name. It's actually named after my wife, Tran Ho. Ho is her last name. I give my Ho a lot of credit. Oh. Though, what if something was missing? For me, even when I was in college, I always wanted to be an actor. Well, you didn't know? your parents say, we paid for all this, like, med school? Like, yeah. what are you doing? This was a passion, sure, but never a dream. But I did not know if I could make it in show business with, you know, my look, which is, I know, hunky. Rather, a more secure direction towards financial stability. Ken Jeong is a man of many talents. He's a stand-up comedian, a character actor, and oddly enough, a licensed physician. I, I technically have my license. I haven't, I haven't practiced in years. Most of us know him as the absurd and unpredictable gangster in the Hangover trilogy. <laughs> Don't let the beard fool you. He's a child. It's funny because he's fat. Others know him as the eccentric Spanish teacher from Community. Why do you teach Spanish? Why not martial arts? Who did this? What is that? It's a tiny piece of paper. But before Ken Jeong became Leslie Chow or Ben Chang, he was just your average student dealing with the overwhelming pursuit of a degree in medicine. Ken had always showed an interest in entertainment. For me, I, even when I was in undergrad, even when I was in high school, like I did a little bit of performing. In high school, he joined the orchestra, graduating at the young age of 16 and getting a head start on a college education that almost seemed inevitable. You did all that work to become a doctor. Yeah. How did they, you tell your parents? I, <laughs> His immigrant parents knew that there was far more stability in pursuing medicine. Since they had uprooted everything to provide a better youth, it felt almost impossible to say no. Because I didn't have any family support. Like, my strict traditional Korean dad who wanted me to be a doctor before I was born. However, college would be exactly the creative spark he needed. I did a little bit of performing, and um, so at Duke, I got bitten by the acting bug. After attending a theater class, he'd fall in love with comedy and acting, and during his medical residency would moonlight as a stand-up comic. I see patients during the day and I do this stuff at night. It's like crouching doctor hidden comic, you know what I'm saying? Everywhere this man went, it seemed like people wanted him to choose the alternative career of comedy, or at the very least, move closer to where he could better practice both. And so he would. After his residency, he'd find work as a practicing physician in Los Angeles. This was a time when there wasn't a ton of work for Asian actors. Not only that, but he wasn't a typical leader man. He was somewhat lanky, short, and at this point had to find what auditions he could while balancing a full-time career, one that demanded a tremendous amount of time and attention. By the way, I'm thinking all this while 50 patients are waiting for me. <laughs> Whatever was left would be saved for acting. But the industry wasn't all he had his eye on. In passing, another doctor would catch his attention. The problem was, they worked in different departments. What they needed was an excuse to get together, a place to be familiar without the boundaries of a workplace environment. And so they'd find it. At a happy hour mixer, he'd meet his then soon-to-be wife Tran. Almost immediately, they'd bond over their love of comedy. She's Vietnamese, doctor, last name Ho. That's what oh, it is, Jenny. Oh, okay. I married a ho, all right? <laughs> I mean, if you listen to this man speak about her, it's clear he was, and still is, completely head over heels for this woman. Man, I'm nothing without my wife. You're the strongest person that I know. He was now in the midst of a relationship that was not only blossoming with romance, but unparalleled support. When I decided to leave medicine, and my wife, who's also a doctor, who knew she married a comedian at heart, she said, you know, I fully support what you're doing. Yeah. And after a few years of a blissful marriage, and after the birth of of two adorable twin girls, it seemed like his personal life wasn't the only thing beginning to bloom. After a few minor roles in mega shows like Two and a Half Men and The Office. Michael, what did you tell him? Nothing. Then why are his hands up? Bill? He told me he couldn't show it to me, but he has a gun. 
his alternative passion was beginning to bear fruit. That time when I auditioned for the American office, it was not necessarily a hit at that time. It's like working with LeBron, man. You're just working with just one of the all-time greats. There was just one problem. He hadn't landed anything major enough to calm the concerns of his parents who, at the time, were pretty upset by the news. When I quit my medical job, my strict traditional Korean father was like, you bring great shame to Jung family. <laughs> However, Ken had a dream to fulfill. He could no longer sit idly by as his time, energy, and creative vision would slowly pass him by. Ironically, it was his background as a doctor that would help him find roles in not only sitcoms, but his first major feature. Judd Apatow, the writer-director, was looking for an actor with medical experience. With Apatow directing and a star-studded cast, Knocked Up would be exactly the breakthrough he needed. I'm gonna be taking a nap because you called me when I was banging my wife. It was a bit of medical authenticity, plus my first real experience into actor prep. Ken Jeong was on the map now. I mean, he was doing press tours, attending red carpets, exactly the sort of publicity you need for this career to thrive. As a result of the consistent work, he would finally quit his job as a doctor and pursue acting full time. But it wasn't all an easy path. Sometimes life throws you a massive curveball, one so vicious that you're left absolutely devastated. And it came back stage three, triple negative breast cancer with a 23% chance of survival. Her twin daughters just one year old at the time of her diagnosis. Not only was the struggle of fatherhood an overwhelming task, but with his wife's illness, he was now a full-time caregiver. Ken was so strong for me. This dream career of his now seemed not only far-fetched, but given these new priorities, damn near unthinkable. That was the day Ken and trans life changed forever. Ken was adamant about staying by his wife's side the entire time. Even when he was offered the first major role of his career, he didn't plan on taking it. Before The Hangover became The Hangover, I'd actually turned down the part of Mr. Chow. His wife, however, would urge otherwise. When the opportunity of The Hangover came up, he really worried about, he said, I don't know if I should do this. And he said, Tran, what do you think like, yeah. if I did the scene naked? Are you okay with that? And I said, of course. And so he'd follow her advice. And the winner is Ken Jong for The Hangover. <laughs> The reason why I did this, she taught me that life is short, and then don't be afraid to take chances. And I just want to tell you that Trey is cancer free for two years. I love you. What he didn't realize, however, was that the character of Leslie Chow would be the role of a lifetime. Mr. Chow, Leslie Chow. Did you die? I got shot. But did you die? I'm an international criminal. It always ends like this. Toodaloo, mother suckers. Next time, don't lie to Chow. Please, you're gonna hurt yourself. Nothing hurts Chow. Mother oh. Hey. Chow was not only an absolute lunatic, but incredibly quotable. Middle-aged white dude in a convertible staring at me for like the longest time, don't know why. As he drives away, he yells, Toodaloo, mother f <laughs> However, before his career would inevitably skyrocket, he would have to stomach the process of being away from his loving wife. Todd Phillips, the writer-director, he was always flexible with the schedule, and he said that we'll make sure that you go back and we'll schedule around trans chemo. So deep was the frustration that he'd end up using Chow as his outlet. I didn't choose Chow. <laughs> Chow chose me. <laughs> the aggressive and manic state of Hangover's favorite gangster was the product of Ken's frustration with his wife's health. However, even from afar, he knew that he had her full support. He knew that whatever work he did, whatever interview he was in, she'd be actively cheering him on. So during filming, he'd improvise certain moments with her in mind. Because Tran was going through chemo at that time, and I did in jokes uh, in Vietnamese, and that made it in the movie just to make my wife laugh. Got gotcha! you! He says, got chick, and this doesn't mean like release the hostage in Chinese. Actually, in Vietnamese, it means chicken die. With Ken's film career thriving and his wife's recovery going smoothly, it seemed like his luck had finally begun to turn around. Even better was that he'd landed a role that, while maybe not as popular as the character of Leslie Chow, was equally as important. Yeah, they're not made up. Beep, 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 beep. My bullcrap meter's going crazy. Beep, 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 beep. Oh, it's these presents you've obviously sent to yourselves to make it look like you have girlfriends. Community would provide the consistent work he needed. As a Spanish teacher, Ben Chang was a character that was at times both incredibly outlandish. I am a Spanish genius! And deeply endearing. Almost immediately, and not surprisingly, he'd become a Community fan favorite. 
Houston, we have an idiot. But it's not just his performances where the comedic talent and sharp wit shines. When he speaks, he tends to carry the seriousness of a professional. Any extreme change in temperature can have your body react in a certain way. But it never feels like a lecture. He's able to effortlessly mix in a good punchline or sarcasm while being completely straight faced. If this doesn't get Adele like numbers, I will f myself. This is all amplified by an incredibly infectious energy. Despite the success, it never feels like he's talking down to you. Teasing, sure, but never beyond a healthy boundary. Well, I saw you at the Emmy Awards yep. presenting yep. with Joel McHale. Oh god, we really have to talk about that right now? He's he's, he's hilarious. hilarious. Well, he's a mercy booking. I was supposed to, like, do this. <laughs> yes. After all, he'd spent years in medicine, a field that was full of its own stressors, where the margin of error was incredibly small. To him, interviews were a cakewalk, and it certainly shows. Life is short, and you just kind of go for it. He's not only super comfortable in them, but also incredibly spontaneous. Did you think Daddy was funny? Kind of. Kind of? Okay. What's the correct answer? You think yes. Daddy? Yes. Good job. Good boy. All right. It's such a curated industry, so when an unconventional figure decides to take on the risk and deliver a line or thought unfiltered... My daughter Harper saw The Hangover when she was 11. Oh, no. Oh, what? Yeah. Sure. That's, wow, good. that's great parenting, George. <laughs> <laughs> Not only is it surprising, but it's also hugely refreshing. This behavior had allowed him to thrive via side characters, but how would he fare as a lead? In 2016, the worlds of acting and medicine would collide with the series Dr. Ken. Though short-lived, it still did well to not only showcase his quirkiness... Yeah, but this guy went to Cornell Med School. Oh, I went to Cornell. Yeah, but this guy dated my wife, Allison Kurumata. No way, Ali? Oh, she's awesome. How's she doing? <laughs> but express his cultural background. Excuse me, is this the Korean men's club thing? I mean, all signs point to yes. <laughs> and medical expertise. Fortunately, this wasn't just limited to scripted sitcoms or the occasional blockbuster. This appeal had also allowed him to take on jobs that are not necessarily the best fit, but easy for him to adapt to. Ken Jeong has built himself quite the incredible career. As a result, he's opted to pay it forward. It's not a plot point anymore. It's That's what the best movies do, is it's not about the talent. It's not about anything. It's about connecting. Let me get this straight. You both went to the same school, yet someone came back with a degree that's useful. And the other one came back as Asian Ellen. Asians in cinema were usually typecast. The characters would obsess over things like education, the validation of close family or relatives, and were often pushovers. This has led him to take a more outspoken approach to advocacy. He was never one afraid to speak his mind. They will let us kind of have more, more nuanced characters on the screen. Hollywood will see that it's profitable. It's very, very empowering. The more direct approach would certainly risk hindering his own progress. He seems to not only remain unaffected, but busier than he's ever been. The guy has attained heights in both entertainment and medicine that most people only dream of, and done so with the support of a love so potent it's expressed in nearly everything he does. This vulnerability, along with his persistence through struggle and willingness to take initiatives that would terrify most people, has made him quite the effective role model. Whether he's offering up medical advice or delivering a punchline, he's exactly the kind of person that not only this industry, but the world as a whole could use more of. They are seeing me, you know, doing something that I joyfully love to do for a living, and that's right. really... Please welcome Dr. Ken Jeong!